When I was 16, I started a, a two-year performing arts course at Salford College of Technology. I think I've been there about three weeks. I was told I was too quiet to be going to acting. And if I didn't sort of come out of my shell a bit more, then, you know, would I consider giving up my place there? So, having set her heart on an acting career, Maxine decided to send out some audition tapes to agents and drama schools. So I rung a friend up who I knew had a video camera and I said, do you mind filming doing a few audition pieces? I thought, well, I've nothing to lose. So we videoed me just doing a few monologues. Hi. Uh, is it all right if I take my coat off? Just I can't move my arms. I've written the words down on a piece of paper. Yeah. So you can test me if you like. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, it's called The Smile. You know, a bit taken aback, I thought. Uh, he's not used to this after all. He's a bit shy. So I'll uh, help him along a bit. A bit. And then I realised the big secret. Your skirt's stiff and your knickers. You're the biggest virgin outside a convent. Maxine Peake's career can read like a fairy tale. Her trajectory is something that people dream of. You start with almost nothing and you end with almost everything. We made the first film we made with her, we made two half-hour films, when she was 21 in 1996. A few years later, we did a second film about what happened when she came out of Prada. While they were applying to drama schools all over the country, Maxine and her friend Diane started taking weekly elocution lessons with Mrs. Walker in Bolton. You really feel the relaxation there. Pay, pee, pie, po, poo. Baby, bye, bo, boo. Baby, bye, bo, boo. Fancy asking Alice to dance to that brass bond. bond. I can't do it. Me and Diane just decided that we'd audition and just audition for Rada just out of just for something to do I know it sounds terrible but we just thought and never in a million years would we get accepted by Rada but we'll see what all the fuss was about after two preliminary auditions Maxine made it through to the final audition which takes the form of a full day workshop in London Maxine, imagine that you are a housewife you've got a little baby in your hand and it's sort of late in the afternoon the baby's just gone to sleep so you have to be very quiet and just very gently say to the baby, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Maxine was only like Maxine. There was no one else in the workshop like her and that caught our eye. And the fact that she seemed to have this extraordinary inner sensitivity with the outer strength. There was a light in the eye, there was a, a response to the other actor that she couldn't intellectualize at that particular time. But she imaginatively responded instinctively. The intuition was very, very strong. And I think probably in the end, it was the intuition which got her in. I know I picked up the phone and this boy said, oh, hello, it's uh, Nicholas Barter from Rada. And I just thought, oh, God, he's phoning me to tell me I'm not in, man. He's just right. And then he said, you know, uh, just like to say you've, you've got a place. And I just went, oh, thanks. So few people get in RADA, and so many of them come out as famous, eventually famous, and fine actors. But she hadn't the money. And she wrote hundreds of letters. We saw her doing that. Wrote hundreds of letters trying to get money from anywhere to, to go there. <laughs> Dear Sir Madden, I have recently been awarded a place at the prestigious Royal Dear Sir Madden, Dramatic I am a talented and dedicated actress, and I know with the expert tuition Rada will provide, I will become a successful actress. Dear Sir Madden, I haven't sufficient personal funds to pay for my own education, so I'm writing to ask if there is any I'm desperate to take my place at Rada, and I know that if And she eventually went there and said, I can't do it. And they said, well, we have this one scholarship. We've got some money there, and if you apply for it, We'll see what happens. So she applied for it, and she won it. £30,000, which covered her fees for three years. And so the first film is about her starting off at RADA, and rather tentative, but quite a lot of inner confidence, and certainly a lot of inner toughness that had got her through a lot of years. I remember thinking, oh, no, what's everybody going to be like? And, you know, there are actors, you know, God, I'll never 
is going to be so theatrical. The first couple of weeks, I was like, oh, I'm not going to fit in. Everybody seemed really confident and dead, you know, and I was, like, getting all worked up about getting uh, performing in front of people. But now you just sort of, you know, everybody's really, really good year. Everybody's really supportive, friend, made loads of friends. You ne'er press me with a mother's groan, yet I express to you a mother's, a mother's care. You only just pick up the, the sounds. You pick up the sort of, the movement of the mouth and the tongue. And, you know, it's things I find is, is actually using my tongue, which just usually just lies in my mouth and doesn't do very much. So it's, it's forming shapes. It's getting you, your mouth to sort of responsive and, and sort of fit in a way, because, like, they keep telling us your, your tongue's a muscle and it's, you know, you've got to keep it working to get it sort of in peak form, you know. So, but I find that very difficult because I'm quite lazy when it comes to to talking, you know. Put a load of lipstick on your lips. Do the blundering thunder rumbles under another summer? The blundering thunder rumbles under another summer. We're really sorry we called you a friend. Don't be nervous. Christ. Paint. Sand. Should we stamp on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's just no, kill it. No, no. Um, 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 oh, oh, right, do the whole line in your own accent. Yeah, express to you a mother's care. Right, and then again, in RP. Yet I express to you a mother's care. Good, much better. There's a lot of people pull up you up on your accent and say, you know, well, obviously you're going to have to tone that down. Or they say, you know try, you know, speaking in the common room with everybody in, like, standard English, but I can't, mm. I just feel so false. I mean... Well, I do, and that's what I feel. I just yeah. feel, you know, and, and when I went home to Lancashire and I tried to do that, my, my friends just said, well, I'm not speaking to you. Don't <laughs> like that. Well, I mean, you just feel such a noun. You know, there were millions of girls that sort of had sort of standard English accents and not so many that had a voice yeah. like mine and probably a voice like yours as well. <laughs> and it, it actually made people remember me more because of my yeah. accent. Settle, that's it. We are looking in this training at the social dances of different periods and the way that those express the world values of the people who dance them. <laughs> So it's such a new sensation to move about in one of those. It affects everything you're breathing and quite uncomfortable, but that's what they wore as standard dress. I quite enjoy it. I mean, sometimes I get a bit angry because I can't, I can't do things and everybody's waltzing off and I'm stood there still trying to sort my feet out, but it's just good to get the coordination. I mean, it, it then helps with everything. It, it helps with, you know, all sorts of movement then. It's useful for the dancing, but it's also useful when you come to script work, when you're looking at plays, because you realise how people were so fussy about the, the way they presented themselves and how different people are in the 20th century than, than they used to be, how things have changed so much. Which this blood needs revenge his death. So let's look at the fact that each line is absolutely packed with images and seeing what... Before I used to dread, when I auditioned, my modern pieces were fine, I used to get up and I didn't mind doing my modern pieces, but now for auditions I have to get up and doing Shakespeare piece. And I just thought, I can't, I can't do it. I mean, it just I just used to recite the lines thinking, I don't understand what I'm talking about. How can I obviously act? I felt like I was acting in a complete foreign language. But now, you know, the more you do, the more you sort of understand. Black night, oh shape thy day, and death thy life. Curse not thyself, fair creature, for thou art both. I would I were to be revenged on thee. Tis a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged against one that loveth thee. It is a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that killed my husband. He that bereft the lady of thy husband did it to help thee to a better husband. His better doth not breathe upon the earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Name him. Plantagenet. Well done. That's wonderful. You've done an awful lot of work on that. It's absolutely splendid. Well done. I think she has tremendous integrity as an actor, and it's a very difficult thing to define that, actually. But I, I think in her case, that there's a personal integrity that connects with her acting integrity. I think she's an incredibly principled, incredibly strong person, and I think you get a lot of that from her and her performances. Thou wast provoked by thy bloody mind. 
that ne'er dreams done aught but butcheries. Didst thou not kill this king? It, it's a sort of easily bandied about term, but I think she's a bit of a national treasure. But if you think about those national treasures, she's the hardest, she's the toughest, you know? She's, she, she's not the cuddly national treasure that sometimes, often, <laughs> those national treasures are. <laughs> After three years' work, Maxine and her friends celebrate the end of their course of riding. For me, I think it has been really good. If I have to get up there and do a piece of Greek tragedy, whatever, I just feel I've got a foundation that I can, you know, I can refer back to. Come on, get you the wall! Get you the wall, Maxine! <laughs> Performances. Named after the founder of RADA, at the climax of the three-year course, where each student has a couple of minutes to showcase their talent. There's a change in my life since you came along. It's a marketing exercise. We make absolutely no excuses for that. The students need to be marketed. They need to be seen by casting directors, by agents, by regional theatre directors, by anybody who might facilitate their employment. For Maxine's tree performance, she chose to play Nell Gwynn in Playhouse Creatures with fellow student Sally Hawkins. Me and Sally had decided ages ago we wanted to work together and we'd been through hundreds of duologues. I mean, we're very different. Sally's very slender and dark and pretty and I'm sort of the big hefty one. So we were trying to find it. It was quite difficult trying to find appropriate casting. I thought, well, you know, I can see myself getting cast probably as, as country wenches and stuff, you know, being blonde and quite busty, whatever. So I thought, well, I'll... Why do you want to know poetry? Or a job? Of the cock and pie? Nah! Cross the street! The playhouse! The playhouse! That den of defilement, that pit of pissed. <laughs> the ladies are correct in the back. Oh, they look lovely. Glittering buckles on their shoes. Gold lace dresses. Lace! Do they fornicate? <laughs> Fuck knows. Make poetry and walk about. I used to go, I can't do this, can't do Shakespeare, I can't do classics, I can't do this script, I don't understand, this character's not for me. But now you've got, you know, you've got the sort of, um, the, the instruments you've been taught, you've got, you know, they can't teach you how to act, I don't think. I think you've always got that ability. But they teach you how to, to pull out your talent and to use it. And if you've not got, if something doesn't come naturally, how to go about it technically. I've written the words down on a piece of paper so you can tell Maxine's solo piece for the tree was Shakers by John Godber and Jane Thornton. It's called The Smile. Um, I'm a bit nervous, so it might be a bit shit. <laughs> right. Four years ago, Maxine made a video of the same piece in her bedroom in Bolton. It's called The Smile. I'm a bit nervous, so it might be a bit shit. No, I'll start, shall I? The shoulders are very tight, the breathing is rather high, this pushes the voice up into a rather tight nasal tone. And then you look at the way in which Alexander technique has improved the head-neck relationship, the breath is more deeply rooted, she's taking her time, she doesn't appear to be working so hard for the effects that she's achieving. There's a whole human being on stage when she comes back to do it after four years of training. She's a comedian naturally. So the funny bit at the beginning works very well. What works much less well in the first tape is the seriousness at the end. Hello, Graham. What's all this bloody nonsense about having a stroke, eh? And she just looked at me. And she just smiled. She just smiled. She's not comfortable. She doesn't quite know where to pitch it. She's absolutely sure what an audience will understand in the second tape. And she just smiled. She just smiled. Oh, sorry, um, that's it. Maxine was one of the first Rada graduates to sign with an agent. 
I said she was terrific. And she came in and met at the office, and uh, it sort of went from there. Um, I just said, that that's it, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Would, do you want to be with us? And she had lots of questions. And since then, she's rather like Judy Dench, played both ends of the spectrum, really. She played in Victoria Wood's Dinner Ladies, was very funny in that. Tell me, what is the most popular meal here in the canteen? Arseholes on tours. <laughs> This Victoria Wood job came up, and I auditioned for that about January, February time. I had the first audition for it. So, I mean, I wouldn't have heard about that if I hadn't been with an agency so early. To come out of drama school and get a job at all is marvellous, but to get this part in this new series by Victoria Wood, which is so funny and such a funny part, was absolutely miraculous and fantastic for Maxine. This is Shobna Galate playing Anita. Your ambition is to be in the bill, isn't it, my darling? <laughs> no, look, you get very good women's parts in the bill. You get to stand in the doorway of a block of council flats going, you better come in then. <laughs> <laughs> this is Maxine Peek, who's not done any acting at all, have you? Not even this afternoon, you didn't do any. <laughs> been to Rada, though, haven't you? You didn't get in, you should look through the window and turn away. <laughs> anyway, so you are Twinkle, and you're Anita, and we'll see you later. See you later, girls. It's an ensemble piece, the five dinner ladies, and Twinkle is the youngest and the one who least wishes to be there, I suppose. It's, it's, it just has a job to finance a drug habit or, I don't know, what clubbing habit. We don't go into it, it's, it's purely a work piece. You never see them outside of their work. Do an extra shift for that bum-faced crap pound, I don't think so. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Thank you. This has been the most fantastic start. I mean, absolutely the most unusual thing is to come out of drama school and get into a television series yeah. but uh, the thing is that we have to really keep a hat on it because that's not necessarily how it's going to be forever and one of the things you've got to do for a start is you've got to put some money away and not spend it all when my dad asked me first thing he said i've said i've got this job victoria what do you know how much you get then and uh, i told him and he went well he said i only earn that in a year you know what i mean so that was you know i mean my granddad said to me said, Max, you don't tell anybody how much you earn anymore because you know i was like and you do i mean the way i'm spending it at the moment i don't think i'll have enough to last me for a year there's evidence she's been a serious star on television in many productions uh, silk was just one recently she was at the manchester royal exchange theater where she played hamlet it's no real surprise to me that she's ended up playing Hamlet. But I think she likes the idea of putting herself in a dangerous place as an actor, stretching herself, making sure it's hard, making sure she's thinking hard, therefore, all of the time, on the front foot, which I think is, um, it, it is a huge head start, actually, for any actor. And, and she's such a genius um, and has so many tools available to her that she makes it with those stretches. I think it's good that she sets herself up with the potential to fail, and uh, she doesn't. <laughs> Seeing, you know, people about at dinner time walking through town and bumping into a schoolmate, so like, God, what are you doing here? I thought you lived in London. I'm like, oh, well, I'm working. And one friend I bumped into, and I said, you know, I'm at, I'm at the Octagon. She went, oh, in the box office? I said, no, I'm, you know, I've got a, a part in a play. So they've all said, oh, we'll come along and see it. It's by a Bolton play, right? And I'm playing a, a young girl from Bolton, so it's, it's great, you know. It's, very fitting. We'll have a pickled egg. <laughs> After the ball is over. It's quite a stretching part. I mean, she's got some quite dramatic moments in it. Most of the stuff I did at, at Rad was quite commercial, quite light-hearted, you know, comedy sort of thing. So it's that's quite challenging to sort of try and take myself a bit more seriously, you know what I mean? She's emerged as one of our best and best-known actresses. It's been a hell of a story, and you're just so pleased that she made it. If I can master standard English well, and, you know, get me, me breathing right and have a little bit more confidence, I think, you know, that would be something. And I think if I can sword fighting, I'd like to come out with my sword fighting certificate as well, so if I can do that and throw a decent fake punch, I'll be all right. Let's shake it up, baby!